On the Ground, presented by The Cube. Here's your host, John Furrier. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Cube's On the Ground. I'm John Furrier, the host of The Cube. We're here with Todd Moore, Vice President of Open Technologies at IBM Cloud. IBM, uh, good to see you again. Cube alumni. Hey, good morning. We're on Thank the ground here. We're, just, we're yeah. just getting uh, the lowdown on the Open Computing Architecture Summit that you guys are having the day after DockerCon. Very good timing. Great to kind of sister up against that great event. Yes, absolutely. We have a lot of folks who decided to stay over just for the fact that they were able to come here and participate. And uh, it's something that we've done in a number of cities across the U.S., always well received, and uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. We bring in leaders from the industry and have them come and share with us. We've chat on theCUBE before a couple of IBM events, and yeah. I got to ask you, do you feel like a kid in the candy store now is the hair standing on the back of your neck with Docker, just the excitement of open source and the excitement of all the openness that's going on around real deployments of applications, not just feel like you're pushing um, you know, the excitement, but oh, in general it's mainstream. Difference. Huge difference, it's mainstream. You know, we've seen this shift in enterprises that was dramatic here. You know, it's not the days of before where we use your open source if you like indemnify us and help us and, and do these things. It's now we want to be out there participating with you. Yes, we're using it and oh by the way it's in production and now come partner with us help us help us get further with it and what other organizations are you starting and how can we join in and be part of that so. in the old days you go talk to a customer you find out what their needs are build a solution deliver it charge for it that's a nice business model of the old days now the, you, you guys are lowering the surface area to engage with customers yeah. certainly collaborating with open source is now a vehicle not just on a pre-sales basis but in needs analysis how has that impacted IBM's configuration of the tech teams, the go-to-markets, how has that changed? Well, you know, we, we've taken a very open source approach to how we go and develop as well, too, right? We have our own processes that we actually take out, and, and people, once they started getting into this, said, well, gee, how do you do it? And so we started sharing, right? And our processes are out there through things called Bluemix Garages. But so it's, it's greatly impacted how we do our development inside. But from a go-to-market perspective and, and the work that we do, Everything I do in open source is always tied to a business need and, and a strategy in a business to go after a market and build a market. And, and we see these things as the centers of gravity that then go and build large marketplaces around it and partnerships. Yeah. And, and it, it makes for an ex sort of explosive growth experience and it sort of hang yeah. on and, and <laughs> go with it. it it's, it's something amazing. The new, the, the old demand gen, lead gen programs we're marketing now, open no. source, it's the coders themselves. It's the coders. That's the demand gen because you're out there collaborating with yeah. customers before you even pitch them on anything. Absolutely, and some of these things that we do, OpenWhisk is a project that we just put out in open source. OpenWhisk is a serverless environment, some Lambda-like kind of thing, and uh, event-driven. We did the project out in the open before we even started working on, on the product inside that's now part of Bluemix, yeah. right? So uh, Big big fan of OpenWhisk, real potential with IoT, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and containers. And we just stuff. added in some, some neat things to make that even simpler, some support in Node-RED that, that we wanted to do, as well as an NPM module now, a library yeah. to help you go and connect things yeah, up. For the folks out there, check out Wisk uh, from IBM Open Wisk, really, really yeah. phenomenal. Developer works open, yeah, um, that's the site. I want to ask you about the Cloud Native Computing Foundation sure. called CNCF, um, a fairly new organization, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. What is this about? This is, seems to be getting a lot of momentum organically. I know there's some big vendors in there, suppliers, but yeah. it's not, just a foundation where people are just high-fiving each other, some real work going on. Yeah, Take absolutely. a minute and explain what that, this organization okay. is. So, so we, we put this together with, with other big heavyweights like Google and ourselves and Red Hats and of the world because uh, there's this gap in where cloud native computing is going. We all see that uh, we can create the plumbing together and that there's good plumbing that is being reached places and overlapping. And, and to do that just isn't, isn't something that we have to do. Um, so, so what we're doing is working together now to define you know, where we think the best practices and, and those things can, can be to foster projects that uh, can be the next generation of where we take cloud native and to use the best of what's out there. So you know, we, we actually brought together organizations like the, the Cloud Foundry organization and their service broker work with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation folks. And we're looking at that as being the service broker that we then work on together and, and promote and, and go and build. So it's things like that. We brought the OpenStack Foundation together with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So is the catalyst more interoperability or more? Interoperability, not building less out a fragmented. Platform, less fragmented, reduce duplication, use the best of what we have, and, and build a vision out that customers and all the rest mm -hmm. of the industry can get behind so that you know we move it quicker, faster, you know, 
more interoperable, less what vendor gap, What gap were you talking about when you said they fill in that gap? Is it just standardization or what, what specifically Yeah, they become de facto standards, right? I think that's the important thing is it, it becomes de facto standards that happen. And, and you get that choice by getting feedback from the users who tell you, you know, what they like and, and, and what they want to see and, and the things that they pick. So, so how we're doing this is inviting in the users as well, too, to be part of this. We want folks to come join the CNCF and give us good feedback. Todd, I want to ask you about choice because this always comes up and we love talking about multi-vendor back in the old days. Now, mm -hmm. that is ultimately the number one thing about that customers are looking for is they're not, they're kind of afraid to lock in kind of an older definition, oh, yeah. but now you have a lot of stuff being developed by multiple vendors, and they all have their own agenda. They got to make money. They have a business model, mm -hmm. but the choice is a big thing. Mm -hmm. How is the choice word for customers changed, and how does things like the CNCF change the choice? Does it enable more choice? And how is uh, are you guys uh, fostering? I think it enables it? more choice. Uh, so start with right there, because I think that as we create interoperability between these various projects, we then can see a container say, you know, come from one environment, move into another as an example, right? It's seamlessly without having to do anything. Uh, you know, so I think those things are important. So choice, very important. But, but they're also looking for who's out and engaged in these organizations, who can they partner with to go effectively then create the things, the functions, the features that they need or help them with problems that they have or help them stand things up. So that's that's become a big part of the, the the actual picking who you work with and what you go and do and whose products you then actually use because much of this is a, a very large integration task. And you know, the early days of Linux, you would go out and you would pick up the piece parts and create your own little internal distribution and maintain it. Well, you think about that replicated across all these different projects that now come together to build your platform. It's almost impossible to stay on top of that. So finding someone who can help you go and do that, that's that's really key. And, and that's why you know oftentimes IBM is chosen. So frankly, that's yeah. you know, why we're in it. Well, you guys have such a great track record in open source and, and you know people who actually know you guys know you guys have a deep bench historically over the years, but now yeah. uh, heavily in cloud. So the final question I want to ask you is relative to customers. Um, they love this new architecture of the cloud, but speed is a big factor, yeah. it's going faster. Um, how do you guys balance that? Because open obviously it means everything's out in the open. Some would argue that open means slower. No. I would say maybe fosters agile. You guys are addressing this piece, but talk about that. I'll give you a really right. specific example. I'll use Node.js as an example. So here was an organization that fractured, we brought it back together, part of the issue there was speed. We had folks who wanted to get their latest features and functions into something to get them out, get feedback on them, see it going on. At the same time, we were trying to protect the user base with what it was it needed, right? So, so what we came up with was a strategy called the long-term stable release structure. So we, we alternate releases where we have you know the release where everything can be in there and the kitchen sink, and then we after a short period of time, we create the long-term stable release, and we have a very predictable cycle so that those who get on board and want to be part of this can either be on the stable side or they can play on the wild side and, <laughs> and, and, and be there with you know what, what's the latest. They can walk on the wild side. No, but people will do that. They want to be agile. They want to push the envelope. Yes, and, 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 and it makes the developers have you know, a home for that outlet of wanting to push the envelope as well too. So, so that's how you do it. That's you know one of the best examples I've seen of being able to blend the two. Well, together. certainly you guys done a great job with stability, also enabling the wild side uh, and developers. And it's an application market. Todd, thanks for sharing yeah, uh, insight on the ground. John Furrier on the ground. Thanks for watching.